Many of you know LaBrittany Jones, and uh, last year she won the coveted golden ladle of the chili cook-off. And she's very serious about retaining her championship. So I'm, I'm very curious who will want to take that golden ladle from her. And there's some, uh, well, well, we will see. If you, you need to sign up for that, it'll be an awesome time. It's a great time. We want to be a part of that. We're continuing this morning uh, in part four of this series that we began called Lamps and Lights. Lamps and Lights, where we were looking at Psalm 119. Uh, where the psalmist says that his word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path, rediscovering the whole idea of basing our life on the word of God, that, that the word of God is unchanging when everything around us changes, that it is unshakable when everything else around us is unstable, and how we've got to base our life, our, our world, our family, our marriages, our community on the word of God. And we've, we have been practicing this by memorizing Scripture. Who's been memorizing your Scripture the last few weeks? Okay. And uh, uh, you got a little card, and it's got these Scriptures that you're, you, you take home, and you memorize, and you, you get a little prize when you come up and, and deliver your memory verse. It's been a lot of fun. Everybody has, has really engaged. If you've not started that, if you've not done that, you can jump in right now. And, um, and so we're going to continue that this morning. I want to ask a question. How do you decide what matters most in your day? How do you decide what matters the most in your day? I think one of the biggest struggles and challenges for all of us is to determine our priorities determine our priorities your job wants you to work more hours the kids have soccer and football and dance and gymnastics and you need to spend quality time with your wife or your husband your parents are getting older and they need more attention the lawn needs mowing the dog needs walking dinner is late you really need to get in shape because your high blood pressure is is going up and your waistline is going out and so you need to do you've got 123 emails sitting in your inbox right now that needs to be answered by tomorrow morning oh yeah and where does church fit in where does God fit in in our schedule how can anyone expect you to spend time with God every day with everything else going on that you've got to do oh and ministry actually serving like in the nursery or somewhere like that in church I mean really how do we do that how do we prioritize our time and relationships and finances without the worry and without the stress that comes with these decisions? I need to tell you something that every day we make decisions based on priorities and every day we send messages with those decisions. Every day. Now if you're a guest with us today, this is, you can talk out loud at this church. Amen nobody's going to think you're weird nobody's going to look at you and make dirty faces you can say amen you can talk back you can shout as long as it's affirmative and not you can do that if there's something I, that I preach that you like or that you agree with you can say amen preach that say that you can do that if you get so excited you need to stand up nobody's going to look at you weird okay this is interactive this is not at some point we made church just an, uh, an observation listen we're just going to sit there and you inform me or entertain me right come on and at some point, we change. This was never intended for just observation. This is interactive. Come on. This is a participatory thing, right? Don't leave me up here by myself, right? So, so we make decisions every day, and we send messages with those decisions. Think about this. When you can't afford a date night with your wife, but you somehow can afford a new shotgun or a new, oh, yeah, yeah. Or a new golf club, come on. Or a new fishing rod, right? You send a priority message. When, when you got seven hours to scrapbook, but don't have two hours to spend with your husband, hello, both sides of that thing, you send a priority message. When you get a new boat or a new flat screen TV, but yet suddenly when the, teacher, when the preacher talks about tithing, you suddenly can't afford to tithe, you send a priority message. This is going to be one of those services, by the way, with one of those messages. 
Come on. When you stay at home from church because you're tired, you send a priority message. Our daily decisions reveal what we value the most. Let me, let me say that one more time. Our daily, because that's worth a tweet. Our daily decisions reveal what you value most. How do we balance work, school, family, hobbies, the things we love to do, church, and our relationship with God without getting overwhelmed with worry and overtaken with stress? How do we do that? Well, aren't you glad that we serve a God that understands that all of these things in life happen? Let me show you how to handle them. That he, that he spells it out in his word. Go with me to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 and we're going to focus on on one on one verse Matthew chapter 6 before we before we get to that let me give you just a little bit of context the disciples the 12 men that are following Jesus that he's leading that he's trying to teach them about his ministry he's trying to teach them about the kingdom he's trying to prepare them for the the future evangelistic harvest that they're going to be responsible for uh, they are overwhelmed with the logistics of following Jesus full time they are overwhelmed with this whole thing they've got questions like do we bring two coats do do we bring shoes? Um, what about our families? What about my mom and dad? What about my spouse? What about our businesses? What are we going to eat on the way? What are we going to, are we going to have water on, on, on the way? What, what is it? What do we do? Where are we going to sleep? And, and Jesus says, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about the details. Don't worry about all of the methods. God knows everything you need and he will take care of it. How many of you realize that? You understand that. We get that intellectually. We get that in our brain. Yes, God will take care of every need. We believe that, but then we stress before payday. We stress at the end of the month. We worry about, well, how are we going to... Well, I trust you, God, with this. Because apparently this is easy for you. But somehow God can't handle your overdraft. I'm just going to preach over here for a second. Matthew six thirty three. This is what Jesus has told them. All these questions. How are we going to do? What are we going to do? Where are we going to go? What are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? What are we going to wear when we get there? How is all this going to work out? How, give me the details, God. And he says this. He says, but seek, seek. That means look for, pursue, go after, make a priority. Seek first my kingdom, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you now i have hung my hat on this verse i have based my life based decisions and the foundations of my life on this verse if i will seek god and this is what jeremiah says he says if you will seek me you will find me if you search me with all of your heart meaning you we will find god if we're earnestly looking for him and if we seek first his kingdom what he wants what he his mind if we seek his righteousness all these other things all these other things kind of you can just make an inventory of what would fit in your all things what you eat what you wear where are you going to work where are you going to go to school who are you going to marry how many kids are we going to have how are we going to provide for the kids how are we going to make the the mortgage payment how are we going to do all of this if we just trust him he'll take care of it once the important thing is figured out the spiritual need what do we really really need it has nothing to do with food or provision or 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 security that's not not it it's the spiritual need once we figure that out he'll provide the physical he'll provide the financial he'll provide the emotional need these will be given now when i read that seek first uh, his kingdom and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto them i read that as a promise they will be, they shall be added unto you. It's a promise given. It is a gift to you. Are you hearing, are you hearing what I'm saying? Okay. When, when was the last time that you stressed over trying to figure out a gift somebody else was going to give you? 
Doesn't happen, does it? You don't. It's their gift. It's their responsibility to give it to you, to provide it to you. This is God's gift to you and I. He'll figure out how to provide it. That's his problem. He just said, here's what you need to do. Seek me, my kingdom, my righteousness. Everything else will be my problem. Stop stressing. Tim, how do I do that? That's very easy to say because you're not in my skin. You're not in my shoes. You don't understand my issues. No, no, but I have my own. How do you stop stressing? The only way to stop stressing is to start seeking. Amen. Stop stressing. This is another tweet. This is another hashtag. Hashtag stop stressing. Start seeking. Amen. Start seeking. Don't just look for God, but live for him and how how can i look for god and live for god so that in the end i can receive his gift recognize his greatness i think there are some practical everyday things practical stuff that we can do to actually seek first because that's the question well how do i do that how do i seek first how do i well what what does that mean there are some areas where we can put god first in all the time here's the first one if you want to take notes today the first place that we want to seek God is the in, in place God first is the first of my day the first of my day this is what Psalm 63 1 says oh God you are my God and early will I seek you and my soul thirsts for you my flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water my pastor Joe Lyons he says that if you want God to intervene in your day you need God to initiate your day if you want God to intervene in your day God needs to begin your day to start your day God should not be an afterthought or the recipient of our leftovers but yet actually God would be the first person that we talk to the first person we think about the first words that are that come out of our mouth should be praise uh, unto unto him what happens is for many of us and I fall into this trap too is that the first thing we want to do is we go for our phone and we want to see what we missed those eight nine hours that we were sleeping because something earth shattering has happened on social media that we've got to look at for the very first thing in the morning something has, will transform my world and my life and I somehow I've slept through it and I've missed something so the first thing I've got to do before I get coffee or get up go to the bathroom put my glasses on or whatever is I've got to look at Facebook I'm preaching today, y'all, whether you want me to hear it, you hear it or not, right? I mean, or we, we do something, we, 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 we look at the news, or we look at, we turn on, you know, Good Morning America, we do something, the, the first thing that, that we do, and we wonder why our, our day gets off to the start that it has, because we've not given it the priority that he deserves. We're going to give him our first, we're going to give him our best early in the morning in the gospels we see jesus consistently make time to get alone with the father even in moments where people were clamoring for his attention even when people needed his touch and they needed to be healed he still got away early in the morning to connect with his father mark 135 now in the morning having risen a long while before daylight what does that mean he got up early in the morning he went out and he departed to a solitary place and there he prayed well tim you don't understand my 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 life is like this and my life is like that and i've got all of these things and i've got the kids and i got the school and i've got you don't understand that it's difficult for me to get up early here's the problem with trying to have this and we talk about it all the time and this is uh, jesus is modeling this for us our quiet time our devotion time our time where we connect with the father that we see jesus doing all the time in his life and the problem with trying to reserve that at the end of the day is at the end of the day is the end of me. I'm done. My attention span as the day has gotten longer has grown shorter. And by the time I'm actually ready to, to spend some time with God, I'm now going to the evening service at bedside assembly because I'm in the bed asleep. 
And so early in the morning, well, Tim, I, I struggled to get up early. We'll just get up early. Well, that's hard for me. Get over it. It's hard for me to get, we'll go to bed earlier. I'm, 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 I'm just trying to, to give you some practical insight that if you want God to truly be the initiator of your day, if you want God to dictate the, the, the route of your day, the outcome of your day, then you have to give him priority as early as you possibly can. And so many times we, we don't like the results of the path of our life, but we don't want to change how we're getting there. We don't like the end of the day. We don't like the results, but we don't want to change anything to do that. And so what I'm telling you, in order to get different results in your life that you really need, that, that your family needs, that your life needs, you're gonna, we're going to have to change some things. And some of us may need to get up 15 minutes earlier or 20 minutes earlier. We may need to go to bed earlier. I'm telling you, whatever it needs to do in order for, whatever you need to do in order to make God first in the morning in your life, the first part of your day then you do it you do it if the son of God needed to connect to his father early in his day how much more do you and I if Jesus needed to pray and read his Bible and have a cup of coffee with the Lord because I believe he did the first day the first part of the morning how much more do you and I do I will, never, I will never forget this and I share this a lot it's part of my testimony growing up I had incredibly amazing awesome parents and I remember getting up early my mom would get up before me and my dad would and I would walk into the living room and I would see her sitting I can see it right now in that old plaid chair with the lamp on uh, beside her and her living bible open to the book of Psalms in her lap and her head in her hands she had just read the bible and she was praying every morning whether I saw it or not. She knew that that was what she had to have in order to gain the strength she needed for that day. Set the tone for your day by acknowledging God as your source and your strength. It matters. It will change you. Early in the day, I'm going to seek God. Early in the day, I'm going to make God my top priority. I can also make Him first at the first of my week the first of my week today Sunday worship corporate gathering going to church this is Acts 20 verse 7 it says now on the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread Paul ready to depart the next day spoke to them it, and it goes on to say that they ate and they met together with glad and sincere hearts not only at the beginning of the week but every day, every day. Uh, here's, here's a shocking statistic. A survey recently conducted of American churchgoers say that 48% of everyone that calls themselves a churchgoer in America attends church less than once a month. Now, I'm not here to browbeat you or to make you feel guilty or to make you feel bad or try to manipulate. I just need, I, here's what I'm doing. All I've got to do is tell you how important the body of Christ is for you to be a part of it. That's all I'm saying. And to make church, this gathering, a priority in your life. The New Testament church didn't meet once a month. Amen. They met every Day, Aren't you glad I'm not asking you to show up here every single day, right? Maybe some of you want that. We'll, we'll see if we can fit that in the schedule. Then from house to house, they, they met. Even after they met together, then they went from house to house, and they, they had a connect group, and they, they fellowshiped together, and they ate, and they, they worshiped. They had communion. Every day they met together, and as a result, the Scripture says that the Lord added to the number daily those who were being Saved. They were making his house a priority where the atmosphere created such an environment that people were being added to the Lord. They were being added to the church through salvation every day. This is not just attending when we can. We're, we're seeking, remember, we're seeking what? First, the kingdom of God. Not when it fits our schedule or when it's convenient or when there's nothing else to do. First isn't always when it fits first is a priority our soul needs what's happening here our soul needs this our spirits need what is happening here 
I, I, I bet uh, uh, if, if you were to, and it's been so long since I've been a normal church person. So I put myself in your shoes for sure. When we would miss, I, I missed it. I felt it. I felt the void. I felt the gap. I needed this. I needed the community. I needed the worship. I needed the word. I needed, there is, there is uh, the bread of life here that we come and be a part of and, and partake in. Our children need what's happening in kids ministry right now. They need that. They need to hear the message that's being preached back there. They need to hear that message. They need to participate in in worship. Tonight, when we come back tonight, we need what's going to happen tonight where we can all come back together as a family and kids and adults and and spend time in the presence of God. We, 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 We need that. When church, listen to me, I need to be very serious when I say this. When church is not a priority, we can't wonder why our kids think Jesus is unnecessary. The author of Hebrews says it this way, Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. On the first day of the week, nothing gets priority over spending time with God. Now, my kids have never known a day where that wasn't the case. Sundays, this is what, we do we come to the house of God on the first day nothing oversteps that the first of the week worshiping God together is my priority and the third is I'll put God first of my month I'm going to use that as the example the first of my month in the tithe oh here we go because that's all that preachers talk about is the money that's all the preachers want is the money and I'm going to get into that in just a moment let me just read a, a scripture to you Leviticus 27 30 and all the tithe of the land whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree is the Lord's it's holy to the Lord it's holy to the Lord when we make God first We are putting him first at everything. It makes no sense to say, God, you are first in my life in this area, in this area, this area, but this one you can't touch. This area of my life is off limits because this area I can handle, I can take care of, of myself. God, you don't need to worry your pretty little head about what's going on in this area of my life. I can handle it all by myself. That's, you can't do that. It's all or it's nothing. It's all or it's nothing. He wants to be first at everything. First at what we do. First at what we have. First at what we are to bring. We're to bring God the first tenth of what we receive as a tithe. Well, Tim, you know, the tithe really, um, you know, that's Old Testament and that's the law. And now we're under the, you know, the dispensation of grace. And so we really, you know, we really don't have to give, you know, a tithe. We don't really have to give. No, you don't really have to do anything. Uh, the tithe, actually, if you want to, if, if we want to be a little bit more specific, you know, Jesus never said anything about 10%. He didn't actually quantify the giving with a number. You're, you're right. No, he didn't. In fact, a conversation he had with a guy by the name of a rich young ruler, he said, why don't you sell everything? So in light of that, what Jesus really wants from us and desires from us, he really, he wants everything you got. Because he provided everything you have. So in light of that, I'm okay with the 90% that he's going to bless with. Right? Tithing is an expression. It's an expression. We're to bring God the first tenth of what we receive as our tithe. God must be the first, look at me, look at Exodus 23, 19. The first of the first fruits 
of your land you shall bring into the house of the Lord your God the first fruits of your land come on when a tithe is a 10% of your gross income I'm going to get real practical and real specific here gross income why because the mortgage payment is not a first fruit your insurance or your 401k is not a first fruit the gross is everything that you are given that's the gross and so the first fruit of that the first 10 percent of that before any other hands any other fingers get into pie that is the lord's y'all are looking at me like i'm crazy and i know you're having a good time it just hasn't made its way to your face yet i'm believe me it just hang with me just hang with me okay for just a little while longer because tithing is really not about money it's not about money because here's here's why god thinks it's very important because he understands the value of your dollar he understands that he understands that we live in a society we live in a civilization that requires currency in exchange for goods and services right probably many of us did not get here on a free tank of gas you purchased it with american dollars more than likely okay the clothes that you wear more than likely they were not given to you unless you're some of my kids and there's hand-me-downs that happen but we paid for the original (laughs) right there's money involved most of us don't live somewhere for free we don't we don't eat for free there is some there is an exchange of currency for goods and services and god understands that and he realizes what it took you to make the money that you have do you understand that he understands you worked hard for that that you you toiled and you, there was sweat and there was stress involved and there was there was manual labor or there was uh, there was some there was difficulty that you had to endure for 40 plus hours in order to get what you have he understands that how valuable that is and how difficult it is to let that go he understands that because he understands the value of an offering he gave his only son he gave that which was most valuable most precious that cost him everything he knows full well what it means to give sacrificially and so he understands that it's about trust he's not interested in your money I am not interested in your money. Uh, next week we're going to talk about Philippians 4.13 where I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And if you go back and you see what Paul is actually talking about, he's talking to the church at Philippi and he says, thank you so much for, for, for giving me this money. They were the only church that was supporting his ministry at the time. He was saying, thank you so much, but I don't need it. I'll spend it. I'll use it. But he says, I know what it means to be abased, and I know what it means to be abound. I know what it means to be hungry. I know what it means to be full. And you know what? Whether you give or you don't give, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So it's not about your money. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns all of it, everything. Can you imagine? You think your money is going to affect eternity? It's not about your money. It's about your trust. And are you willing to trust him with everything with everything it's declaring he is our source of all blessing and increase and by bringing him our first we trust him to take care of the rest did you hear me it takes faith to give god first it takes faith to do that it, it's the first portion that redeems the rest it's the 10 percent that is made holy it's the 10 percent that redeems and makes the 90 percent holy i will never forget and i'm not going to keep us very much longer i promise but i will never we all have i know many of you have stories and testimony after testimony of god's provision but i will never i will never forget shortly after we we had gotten saved and i wished that when when we when the 
moment we got saved I wish everything changed I wish that like we everything turned around I wish that the moment I got saved I was freed from drugs and freed from cigarettes I wish the moment I got saved I was I was uh, uh, I tied the hundred ten percent on my gross I wish that was the case but that didn't happen for me it was a process for me because I had to understand what this whole trust thing meant and I, when I got to the point where, you know what, I can trust God with my heart and I can trust God with my eternity, why can't I trust him with 10% of my little low income? If he's going to do with my soul what he's going to do with it for eternity, maybe he'll take my, my 10% of the $24,000 a year that I was making at the time and he could do something with it that I couldn't, you think? Oh, y'all aren't hearing me today at all, right? And I, 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 and after we got saved, I, I thought, well, we need to go ahead and give because that's what apparently that's what church people do. And I was figuring that out because I didn't want to be that guy when the bucket passed. I was, you know, I've got to put something in it. Maybe you've like been like me when you first got saved and you pretended to put something in it, but it was not, you really didn't have anything, but you didn't want people to know you didn't have anything. Or was that just me? Okay, so... I'm going to give something. I started tipping. Y'all are so righteous. I was tipping. I wasn't tithing. I was tipping. I was giving something. Which, from zero to tipping, I felt pretty good about. Zero to tipping. I mean, I'm doing something. And I believe God blesses the tip, too. Because he knew where my heart was. He knew where I was at spiritually. He knew I wasn't... I wasn't I, I was growing in him and I was desiring him and I was wanting to do what he's asking me to do I just didn't necessarily know how to do it or when to do it and then I then he progressed I progressed from tipping and then I then I felt like he, he asked me to give a hundred dollars a payday now I'll go from zero to a hundred dollars a payday we got paid twice a month I was making twenty four thousand dollars a year that was a big deal and I felt pretty good about that I thought I was, I, I, was, I was progressing along. I was progressing, progressing along and nothing really dramatic was happening in our life. We were just trying to, we were hearing from God and, and the Holy Spirit was leading us and moving us. It was, it was an awesome time in our life and the closer I got to the Lord, the more He would speak to me. Do you know that's what happens? That the closer you get to the Lord, the closer He gets to you. That the more you speak to Him, the more He speaks to you. And the more you want to be led by Him, He will lead you where He wants to take you. And so the closer I got to Him, the louder He began to speak to me. And then He spoke to me about the tithe. Thank you for the tip. Thank you for the hundred. But now I need the tithe. I want the tithe. The desire, the tithe from you. I want you to be obedient to me. And I told Addie, I said, whoa. You, we got a tithe and we came into reluctant agreement we tithed on the and I didn't at the moment I don't think I'd heard any particular teaching or didn't understand the first fruits principle didn't understand that I just knew tithe of what came into our bag we, our, our payroll was on direct deposit I just we get 10% of what came in and God said thank you how about all of it what do you mean all of it Tim, the mortgage company isn't going to bless your 90%. That's right. Absolutely. The 401k that you're contributing to is not going to bless the 90%. Right. The federal government, <laughs> they sure as heck ain't going to bless your 90%. <laughs> we got to tithe on the gross. I said it just like that, Gross. And again, Addie and I coming together in reluctant agreement. And I've shared this story so many times, but I remember, I just, it's clear as day when that little velvet bag with the, with the handlebars that were the offering bags, y'all don't know anything about the, the little velvet bags, you know. And uh, we, I guess we had progressed from the plate to the velvet bag. And as it passed by, I just, I, and I dropped it. And I said, God, it's your problem. Wells Fargo can call you. Entergy can call you. 
He said, all I want you to do is seek me and my righteousness and my kingdom. I'll take care of Wells Fargo and I'll take care of, of the light bill and I'll take care of the water bill and you don't have to worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to wear. I'm going to provide for all of that. All I'm asking you is to seek me first. Amen. That weekend that we had done that, I did, I, we had forgotten uh, our, our pastor's wife at the time had organized this little garage sale and Addie had put a whole bunch of our stuff in this garage sale that weekend. And so that, that Sunday morning when I dropped the, the tithe envelope in there and I just trusted God for wherever, God, I don't know where it's going to go, but I hope it gets to where it needs to get to. I just trust you for it. In the Sunday school class after that service, uh, Sister Georgia came up to Addie and handed her an envelope and said, here's your money from the garage sale. And it was our tithe. And it was at that moment I thought, this is for real. <laughs> this thing works. I was so excited. And he began a journey with us of faith that I've, we've never deviated from. Romans eleven sixteen. for if the first fruit is holy, the lump is also holy. If the root is holy, then so are the branches, the first portion the 10 percent holds the blessing it carries the blessing and then when you re, when you give it when you when you let it leave your hands and into the kingdom of god the 90 percent gets a blessing come on if you get a paycheck tithe on it if you get unemployment benefits tithe on it if you get government assistance and food stamps tithe on it if you have a lemonade stand at the end of your block tithe on it I don't care where it comes in at or how it gets to you tithe on it even when our future was uncertain and we have seen job loss and we have seen de devastation and we have seen uh, uh, an uh, economy turn on us we've seen all of that and e our future was uncertain but our tithe never was Amen. never was when we put him first the rest of our life is filled with order it's provision. Let me tell you something. That don't mean filet mignon sometimes. Sometimes it's just Raymond noodles. But if I'm going to go from zero to the tithe, I'm okay from hungry to Raymond noodles. Provision and blessing. And finally, I'm going to put God first over my day in my week in my months in my giving I want to make him first over my flesh my flesh what do you mean by that all throughout scripture we see fasting fasting Moses received the ten commandments while he was fasting for 40 days Elijah on the mountain encountering the Lord fasted for 40 days we saw Esther with a three-day fast that changed the course of a nation Jesus before he entered into his his full public ministry fasted for 40 days this this past Friday the last Friday of the month we call Friday night fire where we spend just some time corporately as a church I want to encourage you if you would if you would put that would you make that a priority in your life so that we can come together for an hour one time and pray and we ask that during from sunup to sundown that you fast just a day you just you just go without food just for that short amount of time i want you to be in preparation too because the the first uh 21 days of the year for the last three years we've done this we set aside 21 days of prayer and fasting we have seen breakthrough after breakthrough and god do incredible things i believe as a result of our time in prayer and fasting and making that a discipline and making that an ongoing thing in our life not just the first of the year but how do we incorporate that in our whole life why do we fast why do they, why is that even a big a big deal I, I, how does that make God first in our lives I think Paul gives a great example or explanation in Galatians 5 16 he says I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh 
for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish but if you are led by the spirit you're not under the law one translation says that the spirit and the flesh are at war with each other what is our flesh that is our physical bodies that is our thought life that is it's what our our sinful nature craves that's the flesh the spirit in us is the holy spirit you have the holy spirit inside of you both of them are hungry your flesh and your spirit are both hungry and the question becomes which one are you going to feed you're going to feed either one of them you can't feed both of them so which one are you going to feed so why why do we fast why because we want to deny our fleshly appetite what it wants for the sole purpose of feeding what the holy spirit wants are you with me just hang with me just a few more minutes i promise the bible says that we're called to lead spirit led lives right spirit led lives how are you going to get be spirit led if your flesh gets whatever it wants whenever it wants don't miss this whatever you feed will grow and whatever will grow will control whatever you feed will grow right and whatever grows is going to control if you feed your flesh anything it wants your life will be led by the flesh and these things not necessarily bad these things aren't necessarily uh, what you would consider uh, in and of itself sinful but if we allow our life to be led by netflix if we allow our life to be led by the buffet if we allow our life to be led um, by the cigarette if we allow our life to be led by those things we're feeding that thing now we're controlled by that thing and this is what the spirit of god is desiring from you he, he, it, he wants to be fed he he what does he want one he wants intimacy with the father he wants to draw you closer to him he wants to be the priority so that he can lead you in the right direction the second thing he wants he wants god's holy word part of the holy spirit's job in your life is to bring remembrance that which you have heard and what you have rem memorized it's it's the holy spirit when you stand up in that, that little table and you recite john three sixteen. it's the holy spirit that brings it to your to your recall he wants that he wants you to know his word the third thing he wants he wants worship he desires worship He wants to be the priority of this worship service and worship in your life he wants that and finally he wants a life of obedience and faith he wants us to pursue him when we feed the spirit when we feed the holy spirit his influence grows in our life he begins to push out those competing influences. He begins to push out those other voices that would lead us astray or lead us down a wrong path or lead us from Him. When He grows, He takes control. And that's why we got to fast or be in a season of fasting and seeking and praying. God's got to be first in my day, in my week, in my month. He's got to be first over my flesh. And so I want to ask you as I'm closing is where do you place God in your priorities? Where do you place the Lord in your priorities? What would your relationships look like if you put God first? What would your marriage look like if God was first? What would your finances look like look like if you put God first stop looking for the answers to all of these problems and start realizing that God is the answer to those problems will you stand with me all across this building I'm closing look for him live for him 
and then let him handle the rest. Did you hear me? Look for him, live for him, and then let him handle the rest the rest seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things all these other things will be added unto you it's amazing what happens to your day when you open your day in prayer it's amazing what happens in your week when you set the tone of your week with what you're doing right now. It's unfathomable what God can do with your finances when you turn them over to Him. And His plan will unfold, and your destiny would be revealed. And the purpose he has for you will be known if we're led by his spirit and not by our flesh and we put him first. I'd ask you just for a moment, would you bow your head and when you close your eyes? I want to ask if you're here this morning and you've never, you've never placed your trust in Jesus Christ. You've never made that clear decision you've never made that conscious decision that i am done living this way i am i am done carrying this junk i am done with this sin in my life i am done with it and i need to turn my life over to jesus christ and allow him entry into my world into my life into my heart and truly give my life over to him i've never made that decision but you if when i said that you knew this was you and that this is your day and that's a decision you need to make today. If that's you, you need to give your life to Jesus Christ. Just lift your hand right now. Just lift it up. Nobody cares. Nobody, nobody is, it wants to embarrass you. Nobody is looking, I promise. They, if this is you, just lift your hand. I need to make a connect point with Jesus Christ. I, I need to give him my life right now. I want to ask you another question. It's, a, it's an honest question that, that needs an honest answer. What in your life have you been putting before God? It's been another person. It's been relationships. It's been work. It's been finance. It's been pornography. It's been drug. Whatever it is, I'm putting something before God. What is it? Oh, would you take an honest inventory of what's hindering your relationship with God right now? And now that you've identified what that thing is, are you willing to get rid of it? Are you willing to put it down? Are you willing to walk away from it? Are you willing to turn around from it? Are you willing to give it to Him? And for the next few moments, I want the worship team to play. They're going to lead us in that chorus. These prayer partners have been praying all week for you. If that's you, there's something that's inhibiting you. There's something that's standing in the way between first and second place. And will you turn it over to Him? Will you give it to Him? And allow him to be first in your life. If that's you, I just, I'm just i not going to ask you to raise your hand. I just want to ask you to step outside of your row and do something very bold and very courageous. And let us let these prayer partners just grab you and, 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 and stand in agreement with you and, and pray with you. Believing for this. Come on, will you 